Long registration forms can negatively impact the user experience on a website. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to convert a lengthy sign-up form into a more user-friendly multi-step process. This method focuses on enhancing the form's visual appeal rather than its functionality. We will break the form into three concise steps connected with JavaScript. The first step will collect the email address, password, and password confirmation. A button will then navigate to the second step, where we'll gather the username, first name, and last name. The third step will request the phone number and date of birth. Once all fields are completed, the registration process will be finalized. Additionally, we will include options to go back in case any submitted details need to be changed or edited. We'll achieve this using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Let's get started. As always, we'll begin by creating our project folder. I'll add a background image to the folder, and for those following along, the image will be available in the description. Open this folder in VS Code. We'll need three files, an HTML file, a CSS file for styles, and a JavaScript file for functionality. Start by creating a basic HTML file and linking the CSS file. Then link the JavaScript file. Next, we'll need icons. So open your browser and go to remixicons.com. Click on the GitHub logo. Scroll down to CDN. Copy the provided code and add it to the head tag of your HTML document. We'll also need a font. Visit fonts.google.com and search for a font called Sign. Click on Get Font and then get the embed code. I'll use the import option since I want to use it in CSS. Copy the code snippet, head over to your CSS file and paste it at the top. Starting with the universal selector asterisk, we set the margin and padding to zero for all elements to ensure a consistent layout across different browsers. We also set box sizing to border box so that the padding and border are included within the element's total width and height. Lastly, we apply the sign font to all elements for a cohesive typography. Next, we style the body element. We use display, flex to enable flexbox, which helps us center our content. Justify content center. An align item center ensures that our content is perfectly centered, both horizontally and vertically. We set min height 100 VH to make sure the body takes up at least the full viewport height. For the background, we use background from URL and select our background image, then set it to no repeat. Background size, cover. Make sure the image covers the entire background area and background position, center, to ensure the image is centered. Using the live server extension, I'll open this in the browser so we can see what we're working on. I'll position the browser alongside the code editor for easier visibility. Now let's start creating the body of our form. Within the body tag, we add a div with the class container and the ID register container to serve as the main wrapper for our registration form. Inside this div, we start our form tag which will contain all the input fields and buttons needed for our registration process. The H1 tag is used to add a heading at the top of the form that says register. This gives our form a clear title, letting users know what the form is for. Before we move any further, let's style the container and heading to make the registration form visually appealing. Starting with the container class, we set the text color to white. We define the width of the container as 420 px, and make the background transparent. The border property gives it a subtle border with a slight transparency using RGBA. We add padding to give some space inside the container and a border radius to round the corners. The backdrop filter of a blur of 9px property adds a nice blur effect to the background, making the form stand out. Next, we style the heading inside the container. We will use the container H1 selector. We set the font size to 39 pixels and font weight to 600 to make the text bold and prominent. 
The letter spacing property slightly increases the space between letters for better readability. We center align the text with text align to center and add padding bottom to create some space below the heading. Now that we've styled our container and heading, let's continue by adding the input fields and buttons to our form. Inside the form tag, we add a div with the class form input. This div will contain our input fields, starting with an email input. The input element has the type set to email, ensuring that the user enters a valid email address. The placeholder attribute provides a hint to the user, displaying email address inside the input field. The required attribute makes sure that this field must be filled out before the form can be submitted. After the input field, we need an icon. Head back to remixicon.com and search for an icon called mail. I like this one. So let's maximize the browser, find the icon, and copy it. Then paste it right after the input field. We need two more input fields, so duplicate this section twice. For the second input, change the type to password and update the placeholder to password. For its icon, search for lock on remixicon.com. Copy it and place it after the input field. Now let's update the third input field similarly. Next, let's add a button to navigate through the form steps. Inside our form, we'll create a div with the class form buttons. This div will contain our buttons for navigating between form steps. We add a button element. We give it the class BTN and an ID of next to login. The button text is simply next, allowing users to proceed to the next step of the form. With the type set to button, so it doesn't submit the form yet. Perfect, we are done with the first form. To create the second form, we can easily do this by duplicating the existing div. Change its heading to step two. I just noticed that I use the class name form input instead of form input. Let's correct that. I'll search for the incorrect class name and replace it with the correct one, form input. Click on replace, and here we have the correct class name, form input. Now let's move on to completing the second form. Change the input type to text and update the placeholder to username. Go ahead and modify the other input fields as shown. Next, we'll update the icons. We've already been through this process, so just follow along. Lastly, let's edit this button to create a previous button. Change the class to BTN Prev and the ID to Prev to register. The button will display Previous. We need two of these buttons, so duplicate this one. Change the text of the duplicate button to Next, the ID to Next to Final, and the class to BTN. Great, we are done with the second form. Let's move on to the third and final form. Just like we did for the second form, we'll duplicate this one. This form only needs two input fields, so I'll delete the extra one. Change the first input type to number and the placeholder to phone number. 
The second input will have a type of date and the placeholder will be date of birth. For the first button, change the ID to prev to login final. We won't need an ID for the second button, but the button text will be done. Before I forget, let's change the title of the third form to final step. Lastly, head over to remixicon.com and update the icons as needed. We're done with the HTML, so let's move on to the styling. Of course, we'll begin with these input forms. In the CSS file, we'll add a new rule for container, form input. We set the position to relative allowing absolute positioning of child elements like the icons. The width is set to 100% to ensure the input fields take up the full width of the container. We set the height to 50 pixels for a consistent size and add a margin to create space above and below each input field. Next, let's style the input fields themselves. We set the width to 100% and a height to 100% to make them fill the parent form input container. The background is set to transparent to blend with the container's style. We remove the default outline with outline set to none, and add a border with a slight transparency using RGBA. We will simply use the border we used previously. The font size is set to 16 pixels for clear readability, and the text color is set to white. Finally, we use padding to create space inside the input fields, with 20 pixels on the top, bottom, and left and 45 pixels on the right to accommodate the icons we will add later. Next, we'll style the placeholder text inside the input fields. In this rule, we target the placeholder pseudo element of the input elements inside the form input. We set the color to white so that the placeholder text matches the rest of the form's aesthetic. Next, let's style the icons inside the input fields. In this rule, we target the eye elements inside the form input. We set the color to this light color to make the icons visually distinct. Using position, absolute, we can place the icons precisely within the input fields. We position them 10 pixels from the right and 30 pixels from the top to align them perfectly within the input fields. Your icons might be perfectly aligned. If they are not, we will tackle that later in the video. Finally, we add transform, Translate minus 50% to adjust the icon's position slightly for better alignment. Again, if your icons are still not perfectly aligned like mine, we will still work on them later. Now let's style the buttons inside the container. We target the BTN elements inside the container. We set the width to 100% so that the buttons take up the full width of their container. The height is set to 45 pixels for a consistent size. We use background, set to this color, to give the buttons a white background. We remove the default border with border, set to none, and remove the outline with outline none for a clean look. The border radius of 4 pixels gives the buttons slightly rounded corners, matching the style of our input fields. We add cursor, pointer, to change the cursor to a pointer when hovering over the buttons, indicating that they are clickable. The font size is set to 16 pixels for consistent text size, and we change the background color to the green vibe for a visually appealing button color. The color is set to this dark color to ensure the button text stands out. We set font weight to 550 for a slightly bolder text. Lastly, we add transition of all 0.4 seconds, ease and out, to create a smooth transition effect when the button's properties change, enhancing the user experience. Now let's add a hover effect to our buttons. 
When they are hovered over, we change the background color to this dark color. Additionally, we set the text color to white for better contrast against the new background color. Next, let's style the previous button specifically. I will simply give the hover effect styles above to differentiate it from the other buttons. Next, let's style the container for our form buttons. We use Display, Flex to enable Flexbox layout and justify content space between to space the buttons evenly apart. We also add margin top of 20 pixels to create some space above the button container. Finally, let's refine the styling of the buttons within the form buttons container. We use flex one to make each button take up equal space within the flex container. The margin adds a small space on the left and right of each button, ensuring there is a slight gap between them. With this, we have completed the styling for our form buttons. Next, we'll hide the second and third forms so that they are only visible when the first form is filled out. First, I'll change the ID of the second form to login container and add an inline style of display, none, to hide the entire div element from the web page. I'll do the same for the final form by first changing its ID to final container, then adding the same inline style to hide it. Now the web page will only display the first form. Quickly, let's adjust the icon styling by setting the top property to 16 pixels. This should perfectly align the icons. If 16 pixels doesn't work for you, feel free to adjust the value until you're satisfied. Now let's move on to JavaScript, where we will add a functionality to the buttons so that they can display the next forms when clicked. We'll start by adding an event listener that runs when the DOM content is fully loaded. We set up an event listener for the DOM content loaded event, which fires when the initial HTML document has been completely loaded and parsed. This ensures that our script will run only after the document is ready. Let's continue by selecting the register container element. Here we will retrieve the register container element, which is the first form and store it in the register container variable. Next, let's select the other form containers and buttons. You can copy the code as I explain it. Here we are selecting the login container and final container elements, which are the second and third forms respectively. We also select the buttons used to navigate between the forms, which include the next to login, the prev to register, the next to final, and the prev to login final. Now let's add event listeners to these buttons to handle the form navigation. We will start with the next button. We add a click event listener to the next to login button. When this button is clicked, the register container, which is the first form, will be hidden by setting its display style to none, and the login container, which is the second form, will be shown by setting its display style to block. Let's add an event listener to the previous button to navigate back from the second form to the first form. In this code, we add a click event listener to the prev to register button. When this button is clicked, the login container, which is the second form, will be hidden by setting its display style to none, and the register container, which is the first form, will be shown by setting its display style to block. Next, let's add the event listeners for navigating between the second and third forms. In these lines, we add click event listeners to the next to final and prev to login final buttons. When the next to final button is clicked, the login container, which is the second form, will be hidden, and the final container, which is the third form, will be shown. When the prev to login final button is clicked, the final container, which is the third form, will be hidden, and the login container, which is the second form, will be shown. With these event listeners, the form navigation functionality is complete. So, the first form we see is the registration form. When you click Next, the second form appears. Again, when you click Next, the final form appears. If you click Previous, the form goes back one step. This is how you can transform long registration or contact forms into stylish, multi-step forms. That wraps it up for today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing as a thank you. See you on the next one.